the Algeria Stud Farm. Let's take a look at this historic site, tonight, on Project Algerine. There's one piece of property in Erie County that can be connected with more than just an unbelievable history. Some would argue that it was the catalyst that set in motion something larger, something much bigger than all of us. The events of which can be felt to this day. This is a story of triumph, growth and prosperity. Passion above all. This is the story of the Algeria farm. Our story begins in 1873 at a small town named Hanover Junction, located in Virginia. On a chilly spring morning, a horse by the name of Algerine entered into the world. His first home was a place called the Bullfield Stud. It was known as the premier thoroughbred breeding farm in the years after the Civil War. He spent most of his early years eating grasses in the meadow and lounging in the afternoon sun. Algerine seemed to march to the beat of his own drum. The horse trainers thought he was just being stubborn, but everyone knew Algerine was special. But nobody could possibly know just how many lives this horse would affect. Algerine didn't begin to run races when he reached the age of two, like most of his stablemates. It wasn't until a year later, to which Algerine was to be entered into the 1876 Belmont Stakes. At that time, he had only raced once, and has never won. The gun was fired, and the horses took off down the track. Algerine rips up the one and a half mile dirt track in a record breaking 2 minutes and 40 seconds. In attendance that day was a man named William L. Scott. Scott, who was a self made millionaire, controlled over 22,000 miles of railroad and coal fields at the time. supplying much of this coal first to iron manufacturers, and eventually to the growing number of power plants that were increasing in numbers as the demand for electricity grew. Scott was instantly bitten by the horse racing bug and at the time began putting together a plan to enter the horse breeding and training industry. Scott's plan was to build a world-class horse racing and breeding facility in his hometown of Erie, Pennsylvania. This farm would be part of a much larger plan for Scott. In the years following his first encounter with Algerine, Scott began purchasing large areas of land back in Erie. Around 1879, Scott was able to secure a large tract of land, located on a bluff, near the western end of Presque Isle Bay.
and that, is what brings us here today. property, which has now become known as the Algeria Farm, borders West 8th Street, from Peninsula Drive to Summerheim Drive and extends northerly towards the bay. This massive complex once dominated the landscape. The center of operation for the Algeria Farm was located in the exact spot where St. Jude's Church and School are standing today. Scott's men began working on a three-quarter mile racetrack. And in 1880, William L. Scott sought out the one horse that made him catch the racing bug a few years earlier. Algerine moves into the farm that bears his namesake, beginning in 1880 with four mares. The farm consisted of 126 box stables, six foaling boxes, separate stallion stables, a hospital, and a boarding house for the workers. The farm even featured a heated greenhouse. All the buildings on the farm were heated by natural gas wells that were piped from Scott's adjoining property, located just over the bluff, known as Massasauga Point. The farm had a schoolhouse erected on the southwestern edge of the property for the children of the employees. The building is still standing today. The Algeria farm spared no expense. It wasn't about making money for Mr. Scott, it was about being the best. Only the finest equipment and materials were used. The pastures around the racetrack served a mixture of fine grasses, for the horses to graze and roam freely, while other horses trained on the track around them. At the end of the day, Algerine and the other horses would walk this exact path back to their stables. Algerine has adapted to his new home rather well. The farm added the racehorses Kantanka and Wanderer to the group. In 1882, the owner of the Algeria farm, William L. Scott, purchased a stallion from France by the name of Rayon d'Or at a cost of $40,000. He was considered the best racehorse in the world at the time. Scott had a man named Henry Schenk construct a private stable from brick for the prized animal. The farm continued to grow over the years. Eventually, the farm became home to 73 mares and 46 stallions. day-to-day -day operations at the farm were handled by a man named James Samson. Samson, from the Girard area, managed the farm for many years before relocating to California. In just a few short years, Scott has achieved his dream of building one of the largest thoroughbred breeding facilities in the United States. But, there's one thing to remember. The more complex things become, the more chances arise for problems.
it's June 24, 1886 on the Algeria farm, and trouble has arrived. Sampson, who smells smoke and spots a small fire, immediately calls the fire department. The center barn, the one that houses the stallions, has caught fire. While awaiting the fire department, the men working the farm, scramble to put out the fire. A group of men were running buckets of water from Facet Run, a tiny stream, that flowed directly through the southern part of the farm. The firemen responded within 10 minutes, and quickly formed a bucket brigade. They arrived just in time to help rescue the animals. Comet and Wanderer were rescued first. A farm worker runs into the burning structure and manages to rescue Kantaka and Algeria, who were just a few feet from the flames. Some of the men made it out of the building, just in time. The stallion barn has burned to the ground. The fire could be seen for miles. The heat from the fire was so intense, it reportedly melted the tar on the roof of the mayor's stable, just 20 feet away. Investigators attempted to locate the cause of the fire. The main suspect is a former employee who's caused trouble on the farm in the past. The barn was insured for $8,000. Construction on a new barn began immediately. By the late 1800s, Scott's Algeria farm has not only succeeded in becoming one of the best breeding farms in the country, it has earned special bragging rights, as its stables have won more money than any other in the country. But all this doesn't come without a price. Joseph Bartlett ran the boarding house on the Algeria farm. His sudden death at the house shocked many people. Joseph was the former coachman for Mr. Scott for 10 years before a horse fell on him, crushing his leg. David Berger designed and built all the buildings at the Algeria farm including the massive stables. David was at the McNair Farm, another property owned by Scott, which eventually became the West Erie Plaza. David was repairing the roof of a barn when he suffered heat stroke and fell off the building. It's about this time, the story takes a strange turn. The motel that Scott owns just north of the farm is doing a lot of business and the new trolley company in town wants a piece of the action. The trolley company has run their tracks down directly in front of Scott's resort. This began a litany of lawsuits that lasted for over a decade. Scott sued the trolley company to have the tracks removed back to 8th Street. Scott wanted the trolley company to bring the tracks down to his hotel the back way, but they refused. So Scott constructed his own trolley system down from 8th Street, infuriating the trolley company even further. With a looming court battle in sight, Scott begins to purchase more land along West 8th Street. Suddenly, in September of 1891, the millionaire and owner of the world-famous Algeria farm, William L. Scott, dies of heart failure in Rhode Island. Nobody knew what would happen next.
After the death of William L. Scott, the horses at the Algeria farm were set to be sold at auction. But one horse was missing from the manifest. It's theorized that between the time of Scott's death and the auction, Algerine passed away. He was most likely buried on the site just north of the stables. Algerine was 19 years old. The feud with the trolley company lasted almost a decade after Scott's death, even going to the state Supreme Court, but in the end, the trolley company purchased the land directly adjacent to Scott's and was permitted to provide service to their property. In 1893, the government came calling, and the Algeria farm became host to a military encampment. Over 500 men made the western edge of the property their temporary home. The men traveled there by taking the Shenango and Lake Erie Railroad into the city of Erie, and then out West 8th using the motorcar line. The camp needed an ample water supply, so a well was drilled towards the southwestern edge of the property. This well would have been directly under where Fun Town had its giant slide. Now, the state of Pennsylvania wants to host the state fair at the Algeria farm. But, there's a slight problem. The track at the farm is only three quarters of a mile long, and there isn't enough room for the needed mile and a quarter track. Plans were drawn up to convert the track into what's known as a kite shape, which would fit a longer track in the same space, but the idea was scrapped. The farm was again leased and housed cattle for several years before Uncle Sam came knocking again. In 1904 the United States Navy began looking into the property to be used as a training facility, utilizing its close proximity to the waterfront. The site was looked at several times, but ultimately it wasn't chosen. The property languished between tenants and sat vacant for a time, before the property was finally split up and sold off piece by piece. The trolley company eventually became Waldemir Park, the 10th oldest amusement park in the country employing thousands of workers over its 125 years. The property become host to hotels, shopping and recreation. The site is also home to a church and a school. All things that make a community strong. Some things on the property are now just a memory. Future plans by the township for this area include developing it into the heart of a modern main street. Just look around at the wonder of what this one horse has created. Some might say, a little bit of Algerine still lives on inside of us. You've been watching the Algeria farm on Project Algerine.